Today we look at solving multi-step equations, ladies and gentlemen. What do you suppose the word multi-step means? Alex, more than one step to solve these things. So if you see that, you might get it in your mind that these might be a slightly bit more complicated than they are. More than one step. So please, I'm going to list this off for you. See if you can't follow along with this process here. But remember, the same rules apply to equations that we always talk about. Remember what the rules of equations were? Your goal is to get the letter by itself. You want to know what x equals a equals b equals c equals. Second thing you think about is you always do the opposite of whatever kind of equation it is. If it's an addition equation, you're going to subtract to solve it. And the third thing is... What you do to one side of an equation, you have to do to the other side. So if you subtract something from one side, you have to subtract it from the other. Here is an example of a multi-step equation. 7x minus 12 minus x minus 12 minus x equals 24. Now when you come up to an equation that looks like that, people... The first thing you have to do is you must, you must, you must simplify both sides of the equation. That means this. You always look at the equal sign as splitting the thing into its parts here. You need to look at the left side and you need to look at the right side. And you need to say, can I combine any like terms? Can I make it easier just by combining them? Well, 24 is all by itself, so there's really not anything you're going to do over there. But over here, looking for like terms, what do I see? I have a 7x and a minus x. I can put those together. If I have 7x's and I take an x away, I'm left with 6x's. I can't right now do anything with that minus 12, not just putting it together here. So this thing, first of all, changes to this equation. Okay. And then once you get it to this equation, you need to solve it from there. Now, have we done these before? If you look at this, there are two different things you have to do. This is like a combo equation. You've got both subtraction, right? And you've got multiplication. So it's a combination, subtraction, multiplication equation. When you are given the choice like this, you must, must, must always get rid of the addition and subtraction stuff first. Get rid of adding or subtracting first. So I want to get rid of this 12 before I deal with it. The last thing you'll do is split the little variable with its little friend. That's your, always your last step. Okay. So I ask you this question. If I want to move this negative 12 or subtracting 12 to that side over there, what do I have to do? Here's where thinking the opposite comes into play. Ryan and I, right, I add 12. And I need to see you do this to both sides. I add 12 to this, it goes away, it's 0. I still have the 6x there. I add 12 to this side, I get 36. And then pretty much really your last step is going to be some sort of multiplication slash division. Okay? Which means you're going to divide by 6, divide by 6. So x is going to equal 6. To which you're going to ask yourself, do you suppose that works? I don't know, let's see. If I put a 6 in for x in both these places, am I going to get 24 equals 24 over here? Well, 7 times 6 is 42. 42 minus 12 is 
30, right? And 30 minus 6 is 24. So 24 equals 24. I know I did the problem correctly. Let's do another essay. Another essay? Let's do another I'd say. What's that mean? Let's do another problem. What's an I'd say mean though? Number three is just division. Did you say I say? I don't know what I say is. It means I'm saying it. Oh. Oh, you said let's do what I say. 4x plus 10 plus x is 100. 4x plus 10 plus x equals 100. What number when you multiply it by 10, I'm sorry, what number when you multiply it by 4 and then add 10, then add that number again to it gives you 100. That's really what you're asking there. Again, solve the same exact way. The first thing you look at is, can I simplify this side? I can't simplify 100, so it's going to stay. What do I get if I simplify this side, put like terms together? Kaylin, what do I get if I put the 4x plus 10 plus x together? What's going to get? What am I going to get? If I put this together, if I combine like terms, collect like terms, as the book might say. 4x plus 10 plus x? What am I going to get when I put the ones that can go together together? Correct. I can only put the x's together, so I get 5x plus 10. And then when I get to this step, I want to what we call isolate the variable. I want to get the x by itself. What do I have? I have to get rid of both the 10 and the 5. Which one do I do first? By the way, don't let this fool you. You could write this equation like this, and it would be the same exact thing. Don't let that mix you up and make you think that you got to get rid of this first. No, it's the, you always worry about that x term last. You do the same thing in both of these. You're going to subtract 10 from both sides. And when you subtract 10 from 100, you're left with 90. And over here, you still have the 5x. And then as the last thing you're going to do is divide out whatever's in front of that x. In front of that x is a 5. 90 divided by 5 is 18, I believe. That is fake. Ryan, do you have something to say to that? Yes, let's do another one. How about this one? X over 5 plus 4 is 13. Looks a little different here, but really the same rules apply. Really the same rules apply. I look at both sides and I say, can I simplify those? Can I put, are there any other terms together I can put over here? There are not. There's no other x term, there's no other number. So this actually has to stay the way it is. I wish this thing was writing. That's about right. So what do I do next, children? I've got to get rid of this adding 4, and I've got to get rid of this dividing 5. What do I do next? Turn front of the 4. Alex? Um, can you uh, add a sign to a uh, multiplication sign? No, I'm not changing the addition sign to a multiplication sign. Trying to get this letter x by itself. Man. Yeah. And what am I subtracting? Yes, I am subtracting the 4 from both sides. And that makes this 4 completely gone. Over here, I end up with a 9. x over 5 equals 9. Somebody, how do I get rid of a dividing by 5? Andrew Stupford, I multiply both sides by 5. I multiply a dividing by 5 by 5. This goes away, and I'm left with x. Multiply this by 5, and I get 45. Does that work? If I put a 45 in here, 45 divided by 5 is 9, and 9 plus 4 is 13, and 13 equals 13. Let's do Uno Mas. I'll let you do this one. 3m minus 
Well, let's go with that one point five equals four point two. One point five equals four point two. Let's see what we get for that. Best foot forward. Cameron Atkins says he thinks the answer is 1.9 equals 1.9. Let's see what happens here. So this one, to get rid of a, first of all, I look to see, can I combine anything here? No, I can't. Those are all simplified as much as I can go. I need to get rid of this minus 1.5, so I add 1.5. I add 1.5 to this, I end up with 5.7. And 3m then equals that. Last step is to divide by 3. If you take 3 into 5.7, you end up with 1.9. Questions, problems, concerns, answers?